Hey guys, it's Kevin Crawford with Trucks Experience. Got a little bit different of a you know, video set up here. It, yes, it's my phone sitting on a lamp to do a record out the window. Um, I just want to talk to you guys about uh, a couple different things. A lot of uh, people are dealing with bad weather right now, especially traveling out in the Midwest. Uh, and not to mention, you know, they just had the, uh, um, what do you call it, the tornadoes and stuff, which, you know, thoughts are with everyone down there in Kentucky, Illinois, and uh, Arkansas and all that, and even up here in Ohio, I guess there's a couple tornadoes that it hit, uh, not as severe, but still pretty bad. So, you know, our thoughts are those, with those people and hope that they can uh, recover as soon as they can. Um, but uh, I want to talk about the subject that I'm getting ready to talk about, which is uh, being shut down in severe weather, um, more of like not having a choice but to shut down. Um, some people have uh, been stuck at truck stops or which right now they, they should be on the road. I, I believe most of the roads are open and at the time that I'm making this, but you know, some people got stuck, stuck at these truck stops and, you know, rest areas and truck parking areas. And even, you know, a lot of people got stuck on the side of the road and on, on, on and off ramps um, for a day or two because like highway 80 got shut down and what are you going to do? You know, um, what I definitely want to recommend is if you're going to be traveling into an area where, you have uh, um, bad weather, you know, high winds, snow, stuff like that. Places where you know that they shut the highway down, especially, you know, primarily Donner's Pass, uh, I think it's Vail Pass out in Colorado, um, coming into uh, Flagstaff. I guess they shut, shut the road down there once in a while. I, I didn't know that. I just saw a Facebook post today about it. Um, or, you know, anywhere's on 80. And for those of us to travel the East Coast, driving up 90, um, heading towards Buffalo, they shut that down quite a bit. And a lot of people don't realize it. So um, just turn around and you know keep a good eye out on the weather, see what's going on. Um, if you are in an area like Donner's Pass or one of them where you, know, you have the ability to chain up and run and you want to and you feel safe doing it, uh, feel free, take, take the chance to you know, turn around, strap iron, uh, a lot of people don't do it anymore. It's, I think it's a, a dying, uh, dying breed that's doing it. Um, strap iron, as long as you drive safe, as long as you drive you know, within the abilities of the chains that you're, you're running and you drive within the abilities of you know, yourself and you know, what's on the road, then uh, I don't see a problem with it. Take that composite risk assessment. Make sure that you know, you know what you're risking, what you're gonna turn around and mitigate, you know, whether it's changing your speed uh, properly maintaining your equipment and choosing the proper routes to, you know, make any issue as small as possible, you know, so it pretty much essentially won't show up, um, especially, you know, when it does come to that speed issue and, um, you know, your, how you handle your driving. If you're, you know, all over the lanes, then guess what? You're probably going to end up causing an accident at some point because, you know, you're giving your vehicle more of a chance to, swerve and you know hit a ditch and drop into the ditch possibly roll over hit another vehicle any anything like that um so another thing is while you're uh doing your trip planning or if you know while you're getting ready to go out on these loads you know heading out across these areas like 80 or you know any any place that you could get shut down make sure to have the uh have spare food have spare water sodas uh Anything to keep you hydrated. I know soda's not really a good example. Fucking my fucking health tells you know stories about that. But uh, make sure you have you know stuff that's gonna be able to sustain you for a few days. Uh, you don't know if you know you're gonna be stuck there for an hour or two, or if you're gonna be stuck there for two or three days. Um, and that goes for you know even if you just break down, you don't know if you're gonna turn around and be stuck for you know an hour or two or overnight or you know you you don't know. It it could take a day before a tow truck can get to you or, you know, before a shop can get to you. Kind of what happened to me last night. Um, I had an issue with my truck and they couldn't recover me until this morning, which is fine. I was in a place where I had safe haven. I was off the road enough. I was out pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It was nice and quiet last night. Um, I didn't need to idle my truck last night because it was warm and, well, warmer. And I had at least enough food to, to keep me not happy, but fed. And I also, you know, I also had drinks and stuff like that on the truck because I always try to keep water. Well, I always keep soda and energy drinks, but then I also had water and stuff like that on the truck too. 
So, you know, just try to try to keep stocked up. Uh, the other thing is, if you're going into cold weather, make sure you have plenty of warm weather gear. Um, I always keep sweatshirts, and I have a set of insulated pants that I keep on the truck uh, just in case, as well as, um, you know, I, I've kind of learned how to dress in layers and stuff like that to, to keep myself warm. And then at night, you know, when you get all snuggled up in your, your comforters, it just helps out. Um, and if you do have enough fuel to idle, you know, all night, or if, you know, you're with a, a company that allows you to idle, you know, out of your truck, bump heat up, stay warm. Uh, if you're not in a, a company that lets you do that, I'm sorry, I really am. But uh, just, you know, try to find ways to keep yourself warm, uh, whether it be if you have the opt idle where the truck will turn on and off, sometimes that'll keep the truck warm enough to, to sustain you for the night. Uh, the other thing would be to turn around and uh, buy one of those little uh, portable heaters that they run off the cigarette lighter. I actually have one of those um, in the truck just in case I do need it, but I haven't used it for just about a year now. Um, and I really don't plan on using it, but I always have it just in case. Uh, so yeah, so we talked about maintenance, food, uh, clothing, uh, trip plan. If you can avoid these storms, um, especially like if you happen to see that, you know, there are going to be like tornadoes in the area and you can cut down another highway, if possible, I might think about doing it. It might add a little bit to your trip, but that little bit of factor of knowing that you're safe could help you out. Um, as well as, you know, not tearing up the equipment. I drive Conestoga, high winds, uh, the winds that were in those storms, I, I would have been shut down. And to be honest with you, in one of the very rare instances, you would see my truck pulled in between, you know, two solid, you know, reefers or dry vans. I, I try not to park next to them when I get the chance, but that's a point where you would see me uh, parked in between them because, you know, Conestoga is a big sale. Uh, you see a couple of these, you know, ones going by in the video. They're, they're a big sale. They, they flop around, and the more wind pressure you get, they just, you know, they collect air. Um, so, in in that case, I would have found, you know, found a place to shut down. I, I wasn't in the area when it happened. I was actually in Pennsylvania, or well, in Ohio, heading to Pennsylvania uh, when that happened. But I so I really didn't have to worry about it. Uh, let me see. Other things to bring up would be uh, being courteous to these uh, truck stop employees and stuff like that, especially if you are in a location where, you know, you're in bad weather. You might not be the only one stuck there. Uh, some of those staff members might be stuck there, too. It's in some of the places I go to, um, some of these staff members, you know, they live 20, 30 miles away. And, you know, sometimes they have to travel the same highway as we travel. So just remember that, you know, you might be stuck there, they might be stuck there. I was reading stories of a few uh, truck stops. I think one was a TA, another one was a, one was Boss Williams or uh, Pilot or something like that. I, I forget what the other one was I was reading where some of their employees, they had four, four or five employees, both of these stores, you know, both of the different stores that they were working 18 hour days and they would turn around and sleep for four or five hours and, you know, go right back to it. They were sleeping in the, the storeroom and the, the manager's office and stuff like that, just to, to keep the, the store running. And they changed the shifts up and stuff like that so they could turn around and, you know, help us stay on the road, which is what, you know, what they're there for. But, you know, they, they're putting up with these people that are giving them attitude. Try to treat them as best you can. Um, they're doing what they can to try to keep up. And, you know, if they, if they give you attitude, just kind of, you know, brush it off because, they're dealing with a lot of stress too, especially the fact that they're so close to home and they're not able to, you know, they might not be able to go do whatever they need to do to take care of their families, um, just, you know, as we can't while we're out on the road. Um, so try to get, you know, cut them slack, give them a break. And, you know, just remember we're, we're all human. It's, we all get stressed. We all get, we all get frustrated. Um, and it, it's not going to do anything to turn around and get mad at them. It, it could just make situations worse. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I got. Just remember to be safe. Do a composite risk assessment if you are gonna drive on chains. Uh, try to make your best bet or try to make your best uh, choice and make sure to take all the mitigations you can to limit your uh, dangers. And then try to keep you know, your truck stocked up with food, water, and, you know, warm clothes, supplies, and remember to keep the rubber down. Um, best advice I can give you guys, drive safe. and.